let's get this done before my mom starts yelling, Vaughn, Vaughn, where are you? You posted a sign on the door, but I'm an idiot and can't read, even though I'm a children's librarian. <laughs> and we don't want that interrupting, so let's get this shit over. No. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to yet another Netflix commentary track for you to ignore. This is for the 1987 sci-fi classic RoboCop that would be Robot and Cop Officer put together to make one word. Uh, with me this time, as previously, is Rob. Rob, say hello. <laughs> Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> now, this is designed for listening while you watch the movie on Netflix. So go ahead, start the movie, then cycle down to zero, 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 that's maximum zeros, and hit play now. That is the MGM Lion. It roars twice because it's cheaper that way. <laughs> Well, you're on a roll today, man. You're making me laugh. Oh, I shot some videos today ranting about why YouTube sucks and how it it's just like a bully headquarters because all the other social networks... I mean, look at all the effort it takes to make a YouTube video, and yet you can thumbs down a YouTube video. You can't thumbs down a tweet. You can't thumbs down a Facebook post. I can't thumb down your crappy Instagram pictures. That's true. Robocop robot now cop officer it's a rob o cop is what it is yes that's my name you should be an expert on this okay now this is the one like this is kind of like my major gripe of the movie now this is a paul verhoeven thing where yeah he's the director here oh look uh, lisa gibbons on the right terrible 80s hair i i don't understand why we have to see the tv view and it it's interspersed throughout the movie in very odd ways. I guess it's uh, comedic relief, though it's, there's incredibly serious things going on throughout the movie outside of these. Hmm. These parts are kind of funny. Like They talk about this uh, peace platform laser, and then later in the movie, oh, the peace laser malfunctioned and killed two former presidents. It just so happens. Now we got commercials. Uh, what other Paul Verhoeven movie do we have commercials in, Rob? Uh, was that uh, Total Recall? Arnold Schwarzenegger? To a lesser extent. I mean, he's looking at the TV. This is not being shown to the viewer. Because really, it's like, who's watching this right now? And then the rest of the movie is not through the eyes of a news crew, right? Yeah. But Starship Troopers. Remember how it had that the do your part stomp on the bugs kids uh, propaganda? I have not seen Starship Troopers. You're kind of lucky. Most people love it, yeah. but I, I don't care for it. Here's Richard Jones, aka Dick Jones. <laughs> now he may look familiar if you watched Total Recall. For my money, and th I watched this all the way through just a couple days ago, folks. This movie is aged a lot better than I had anticipated. Like, phenomenally so. Some could say it's due to the bloody effects being practical. Practical effects really don't age bad. Like, oh, CGI blood in early 90s can look pretty terrible at times, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so our setup here is Detroit's a hellhole. That hasn't changed much. This guy must be uh, the most amazing lawyer in the world to get all of these scumbags out of jail so easily. <laughs> First day on the job, Murphy. Now you may recognize this guy from his most famous role, the bad guy in Star Trek Into Darkness. Yes, definitely his most famous. Keep an eye on here for how Vaughn-like skinny this guy is. I think that does him well fitting in the suit because if you're a skinny yeah. guy, you can build the suit around him. Hmm. 
I like how they have these paramilitary get-ups. Like, this is not law enforcement serve and protect, but, like, arrest your ass and shoot first and ask questions later. That kind of law enforcement. Also, another Paul Verhoeven thing here. He's really into intersex, like, shared locker rooms. Okay, here come... Oh, oh. Did you see that? Yeah. Let's pretend we didn't. But he's really about that. It's like, boys and girls in the future, they share locker rooms. Trying to bring over his European sentimentality. Infect the Americans. Okay, so they were raising funds for this guy. He's dead. You want to donate? I think that this movie's Netflix treatment has a good deal of DNR applied to it, particularly inside the police precinct. You can see that the blacks are kind of pushed in a direction. It's play Okay, look at some of these people, and they'll have sort of a softness to them. It doesn't look natural yeah. on film. Uh, if, you're lo if you're watching this in high definition, particularly, I'm watching on my phone right now as I'm doing this, but... There are definitely some shots in the precinct here where skin tones look a little blocky. Ooh, you hit a girl <laughs> in the 80s. Oh. Uh, the good old sound of a fist hitting a face from the 80s now is it is her name karen allen uh, i think so that's the uh like female protagonist right not really i mean she certainly jumps in early and oh, then she's okay. gone for like the second act of the movie returns at the end and it's kind of a shame this poor guy he just transferred in and first day on the job did not really go as planned for oh, no. him. No. I think most people would call it a bad day. I would say so, yeah. Did you see this movie in theaters? This is actually really okay. good matte painting right there. They extend these buildings in ways that you didn't think. Like, I guess a lot of this is actually shot in Texas, like Dallas, and they're calling it Detroit. I did not see this in theaters because it was 1987. Oh, I don't know. How? What are you, like 45 these days? 52. Oh, okay. My mom wouldn't let me watch this when I was a kid. It was too bloody. Okay, when this was <laughs> on TV, like ABC always showed like the bloodiest 80s movies. And we would talk about them after, afterwards the next day in school. And... It was like, hey, did you guys see Commando? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it. Did you guys watch RoboCop? Yeah. We kind of got the feeling that the that this movie in particular was for kids because RoboCop looks like a toy. Like, that looks like oh, hell yeah. a figurine. It, there's not a lot of adult movies where the character is designed to in a way that appeals to kids like RoboCop does. And they did that animated series too. I mean, I remember being a kid watching that, thinking I never, never you know, seen the animated series. Yeah, that was I, I loved it. I know I watched a, a lot of RoboCop two back in the day. RoboCop, RoboCop two, and in the early nineties, I had advanced screenings to some of the worst movies ever made. RoboCop three being one of them. <laughs> and even then, at the age of like. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what, what that situation was. I was like eight, and I knew it was terrible. This guy right here clapping, uh, Miguel <laughs> Ferrer, I think is his name. Um, he does a, I think he does a pretty bang-up job here. He's basically RoboCop's father in the way that Frankenstein is Frankenstein's monster creator, right? So we have Dick Jones, his plan to replace the police his plan's terrible it looks cool but not for police reasons 
And the epic fail you're about to see here opens the doors for the RoboCop project. But the weird thing here also is that this guy, uh, Miguel's character, he's like, he's not a scientist. He's a businessman. And he's an 80s businessman, so he's into coke. Oh, yeah. He's not a real scrupulous guy, but I do feel kind of bad for him, you know, later in the movie. Oh, yeah, I sure hope you've seen this before, because we're ruining the shit out of this. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure they have. You haven't seen this, have you? I've seen this movie multiple times. And by multiple, I mean probably three. Okay, well, we're on the same page. Yeah. Okay, watch carefully here. In the live mock-ups of Ed 209, he's got a different shape to him. When it oh. when it becomes claymation, he he had he like this, there was some kind of process in making the dome for the clay model that it just didn't work out right. See how he looks a little narrower at the top. They I do a good that. job disguising. I mean, this is stuff that you yeah. really have to look for. Now, NECA actually released a figurine for this and I think it was like 68 bucks and it looked very legit and this is just like the other year <laughs> so he's next to the live mock up which of course cannot move because this is 1987 <laughs> and if they made this today what would they have done for this character actually I guess they did make this today didn't they Yeah. all computer I imagine right yeah. or a shitload yeah. of it Well, they would have it controlled by somebody. You know what I mean? I don't think they could ever do this AI. It would just fuck up terribly. Oh, like this didn't go terrible right here for this guy. <laughs> He's got the chrome-plated <laughs> Desert Eagle 357. Yeah. These guys are oh, laughing man. like they know he's going to get killed. Like, uh -huh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> big mistake on him. give them the most menacing voice so they want like this futuristic police force for this futuristic city they're building they mention it has like a million jobs it's going to create like a million jobs i'm like wow <laughs> really see ya this you know what this reminds me of right here is battle royale when the first kid to get the collar explosion he's like help me oh yeah i feel like they kind oh. of kind of looked at this when they did oh, that. i love that in the extended version of this they're like i think it was x or nc-17 they might it might have been nc-17 at this time i'm not sure he gets shot longer they just post him up and he just keeps getting lit up that's great but it's not like hilarious um and i guess when blood is not played for laughs it's you know a problem with people but look at the reactions here it's not it's they got the business mind that's for sure yeah they're all somber i'm disappointed dick jones it's like what about the guy that's dead? this guy is just called the old man and he returns for robocop 2 as did the guy with the glasses who was all laughing when the guy picked up the desert eagle All right, so Ed 209, screwing up, creates the entire movie. Prototype within 90 days. Yeah, everything kind of comes together for... Lo and behold, later movie. this afternoon, we get our first candidate. Yeah. I like how this guy is such a shark. Like, this is a good character. Very good, very good shot here. A lot of that's a uh, matte painting. 
you know there's like a whole RoboCop remake uh, on uh, Vimeo.com. It's about about f- an hour and 50 minutes long, and it's hilarious. It's like really, uh, it's like a dark comedy remake. It's really well done. If you haven't seen it, you know, I'll send you the link. It's pretty good. I might let you send me the link. Yeah. But I won't necessarily watch it. Yeah, this is, it just gives me the pleasure of introducing something new. Now, Lewis here, I saw her recently in Carrie. I watched the original Carrie on Netflix. And she was uh, a biatch. I think that's the technical term. I think it's bitch. Okay, well, I wasn't sure if the feminist wanted to castrate me over and Yeah, not. dude, at this point, who cares? But she was also the athletic, tough girl, sassy cause of most of the problems so okay here we go this is what tv tropes calls the dragon so clarence boddicker here he is not the highest of you know the final boss of the movie he's not dick jones he works for dick jones but he is one bad mother low speed car chase On a completely empty road. His character kind of reminds me of uh, Michael Ironside from Total Recall. Yeah, I I can see how like Verhoeven's like, well, you know, it worked so good when we had a balding guy as the dragon <laughs> yeah. last time. Uh, why don't we just have another dragon? Where are the other cars? Hmm. Seems like Boom, a job needed. Boom, dual wield. <laughs> Great. I mean, this guy is biting off a lot of yeah. bonus material here for his first day on the job. I love the hockey helmet he's wearing. Dual wielding in <laughs> 1987. That's something. I think dual wielding in action films this time was invented in 1986 in Hong Kong with A Better Tomorrow from John Woo and it was started by Joe Runfa uh, do you know what most people call Joe Runfa in uh, America? No, tell me Chow Young Fat oh, that's his name that's how you pronounce it I had a Chinese roommate I acquired a Chinese roommate just so I could pass the hardest Asian film class at KU. Oh. Makes sense. And Detroit, man. Detroit is a shithole. Uh, I'm so. not sure where they they film this, but it sure looks Detroit or Cleveland-esque. Yeah. <laughs> you know that Cleveland theme song? Hey, we're not Detroit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, have you seen that? I think so. Come on down to Cleveland town, everyone. We have an economy that relies on LeBron James. We have a river that caught fire. It's just so crazy how, like, the city that, you know, helped found some of the uh, most important, you know, businesses in America is now one of the shittiest cities in America. Crazy how that works. The legit police work here. You know, for 80s cops, they're not doing the regular bust down the door. Everybody's right there. I mean, this is a step higher than what you'd see on TV at this time. Miami Vice excluded, of course, because it was awesome. I like this guy's laugh. (laughs) I know I've seen this gag done in other movies. Well, you are a black guy. I'm going to have to sneak a peek here. See if what they say is true. Oh, you got me. What? (laughs) I love how most villains, like bad guys in this movie, are. they're not scared of the cops. They're just... Yeah, there's the laugh. (laughs) They're just a little annoyed by him. Like, it's nothing they take too seriously. Yeah. 
I guess whenever I saw this, now I don't know how the TV edit explains what we're about to see here. I'm guessing maybe the movie just starts 30 minutes late. Because I swear, it seemed like when I had watched this on TV, it just, the beginning was never there. I, I think you're right, because anytime I've seen it on TV, it seems to be, it jumps right to the action. This is not a T-Man job. Don't move, he said. Now, what would you call this police uniform? It's almost SWAT team. Yeah. Do you think that maybe this inspired the police getup of, say, Starship Troopers, which you haven't seen? I haven't seen it, so I can't comment on that. Okay. But, I mean, I can see where you're going with that. We should pro I should probably watch that. I know it's not as good as... Um, I'm not sure if they have Starship Troopers on Netflix, but they had various sequels on Netflix that, which need to be avoided. Yeah. For sure. Although, I think it was the third or fourth actually had a, an interesting kind of propaganda angle to it. It really seemed like the good guys were Nazis in that Starship Troopers. Like, all the higher-ups... There was a lot of Nazi imagery. It was kind of interesting take. Okay, Murphy, how you gonna get out of this one? Hot shot. In my crew, everybody has a shotgun. When you first saw this scene, you know that we're about to see, did you feel kind of like bad for him? Like I, I remember feeling awful. I'm like, damn. That's, that's kind of hard. I only first saw this scene a couple years back when okay. when people were talking it, it, somewhere on the web somebody was talking about bloodiest movies and someone mentioned Robocop and I'm like really? And they're like yeah you know the scene where Murphy gets killed I'm like well I guess I'll have to rewatch that and I'm like oh geez. yeah, Not the way I remember a, it on TV <laughs> but okay. <laughs> I remember being a kid and I was just like oh my god it was like probably one of the first uh, you know violent movies I've seen as a kid. It set me on a good path for life. Really good makeup effects work here. And Rob Bottin, who of course he did the work with Total Recall, but I mean, just everything here is just really stellar. I don't believe they got any kind of Oscar out of out of this movie. And it wasn't like an epic box office hit. I think it probably cost like twelve million to make, and made like eighty million. And that kind of profit margin you just really don't see anymore. Now, would you still be awake if this that happened to you? I think most people would be in complete so. shock, pass out from it. Yeah. I now I don't really understand what he does here. He's slowly walking away, but his legs should be fine. He's got his chance to run. Why did he turn around? Facing the inevitable. Also, how effective is futuristic body armor? I mean, it must be kind of effective. It, it's keeping him alive, but it hurts a lot. In actuality, if you get... If, I don't know if you've ever been shot while wearing a bulletproof vest with a shotgun, but it's like being no. hit in the chest with a baseball bat. It'll knock you down, and it'll put you out of the game You know, for a minute there. You'll have to get yourself together. Headshot. And have that was a shot? really effective-looking headshot, too, I'll tell you. They don't mess around with bullet squibs anymore. Um uh, Possibly safety hazard, possibly laziness. They could just say, you know, it'd just be easier to do it with the computer. I don't want to get up and have to actually go to a factory and apply makeup. No. Nah. That's the way they make movies now. <laughs> have you seen the, the featurettes of, like, George Lucas making the new Star Wars where he's just lazily sitting in, like, a, a lazy boy? <laughs> telling people what they should be doing and well, that's yeah, about it yeah. whereas in the original <laughs> what snippets they have of him on the set there he's like in, he's contorted he's in all these weird positions he's trying things out he's 
walking around an actual set, not just a giant green living room. Uh, yeah. A lot of effort put into saving this guy who, it would appear to me, died, and they would have called this DOA. I mean, Murphy is one stubborn SOB if he's still alive. You got factoring in massive blood loss, headshot, I mean, just pretty astonishing business here. Yeah. There's no way he'd be alive. Now, this is the start of the POV. So, throughout the film, we're going to be seeing a POV effect of what it's like to be RoboCop. I think this is a really clever way to introduce that aspect to the movie. So, we have Murphy dying, and then it just stays on that as he dies. Then he comes back, and he's got the interlaced video look. He's RoboCop. Yeah, so he's twirling his gun earlier, which I'm sure cops are not supposed to be doing, at least in Kansas. He's doing that <laughs> to like impress his kid. I like how he has a kid and a wife, but they're not really characters in the movie. They're characters to no, him, but we never have to know about them. Because this movie is tight. It's like 90 minutes. It's not dicking around. Shock brings to mind memories of just a few minutes ago, but... Yeah. Oh, he is fucking dead. They've already had him cut open by now. I wonder if those are actual doctors used here, because they don't come across as acting. Yeah. And they don't seem like actors. I... I am pretending to do this in a way, but. <laughs> so there we go. It went black. He died, but but he's brought back here. We don't have like a giant factory scene of bullshit. Yeah, which I do like that. This is the low rent way to do this, but it's really effective. It's really personal. Yeah. It's too bad those giant glasses have come back. Oh, God. When I I see a girl wearing giant glasses, I'm like, you're aware that contact lenses exist, right? And then they give me this look like, what are you talking about? These aren't glasses. These are fashionable eyewear. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to be talking to you ever again. And that's how I talk to the (laughs) ladies. (laughs) Take that. (laughs) A lot of girls do that. They wear... um you know, non-prescription glasses for fashion. I just don't, I don't understand how that came about. Do they really do that? I swear to God they do. Some guys do too. I thought Russell Westbrook of the Oklahoma City Thunder created that trend and I thought it was short-lived for like a weekend, but I didn't realize it was really a thing. Okay, so they're talking about his arm here. It's got quite a grip. It's nice that they were able to build like an actual arm here it looks like it's pneumatic it appears like it's got some water hoses hooked up to it kind of a brave thing to do to actually shake a robot hand now does he keep one arm or one leg or something no they mention it they say oh we can save one arm it's like no i want it gone okay i want him to i want him to be full uh, mechanics or something. Which I think makes sense to me because yeah. why have one hindered human arm when you can have Robocop strength throughout? I think that god awful mess of a remake. Um, they kept, kept one hand. Yeah, like, he kept a hand. I didn't understand what the point of that was. No, it was so that he he could have a serious issue with one hand. It, it, it doesn't yeah. make any sense. I never saw that. I from what I've heard, it was to make him more human, like friendlier. People can relate to him. I'm, yeah, when I relate to someone, it's because they have hands like I do. <laughs> I'm looking for that fleshy hand. Kiss my butt. He's kind of strolling here, isn't he? It's not a real walk. Yeah, it looks like he's on wheels.
again, that's another good use of Matt right there. They have trucked him in. The entrance for him is phenomenal. Like, I remember seeing this. It's exactly the way I, I, I pictured it and everything. Hmm. Now, Hot Toys has a new RoboCop out. It costs them pretty serious money, but there are, like, two versions, I believe, and you can replace his, his face so that he has, like, the cracked visor and some battle damage, whatever. But he also has a version where he has the chair. Now, I like this right here. Just It's so simple. He's strolling, but he's behind that uh, kind of fogged glass. And you don't get a clear look at his face, but you see him leaving. Right there. And he's, he's taller and everything, but he's just really badass looking. Oh, yeah. Everybody has their interest peaked. Should they really be that interested, though? Like, I mean, it's like Dad brought home a new puppy and everybody's got to go meet him. Take a, a close look at the contours of his paint. RoboCop's paint, it's actually like... Uh, I'm going to make up a word here. It's like photo uh, synthmeric or something. It, yeah. It's not actually gray. It is designed to appear metallic on film. In some areas, particularly like here, high definition, all that, you can see how he has a purple or green uh, refraction to it. Uh, around the helmet, like around where the ears would be, you can see that in the back of the helmet as well. But in the second RoboCop, he's got a very blue look, different, different armor, and it's uh, painted very blue. Okay, you see some of that purple I'm talking about? Oh, I see it, yeah. Like a purple tinge. So when you see somebody dressed up as RoboCop and they're not purple, they're doing it wrong. Actually, when I see someone dressed up as RoboCop and they're all blue, I'm like, you're RoboCop too, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, he was he was noticeably bluer in that one. Uh... It certainly looks metallic, but it's plastic or he would not be able to move. No. <laughs> Everything about this design is just spot on. It doesn't look outdated in the slightest. I think the new one looks more outdated or could potentially sooner. I mean, even though it's like skinnier and has this like ride in from Metal Gear Solid yeah. 4 or whatever. And I, I think of the new one, they had two different versions, I believe. I think the like last I think he painted it black act. and then silver. I yeah, I think the last the last act of the movie it was uh, more of a silver color and it looked better, um, but the movie itself I I just hate. Watch it. this gun. This is called the um, Auto Nine hand cannon. Basically, it's kind of like if he had a Desert Eagle, but it's it's mocked up. I think it's a Beretta that's been altered. But does this gun look like a PlayStation Two or what? <laughs> I think that gun the, like look you know how the playstation 2 has those like that grill look around yeah, it yeah that looks exactly like a playstation 2 and in my yeah. eyes that makes this movie look more futuristic that tech yeah, from 2000 sure. looks like tech in this movie now if you were a teenager now you're thinking a playstation 2 is old you know like that playstation 2 that came out when i was born that makes this movie look even older but not to me Oh, also, the way that the leg comes out and it just grabs a gun and everything. I mean, incredibly excessive, but awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, he could just have a belt, but I'm glad they thought that through. I can't believe they gave him the same car. Like, Batman doesn't drive around in a police car. He, look at how narrowly he avoided a wreck right there. Like, that guy had to book it. First night on the job, tremendous ass-kicking. He's just on a mission to clean things up right now. <laughs> Here's the first of the score, a, a phenomenal score. So does Peter Weller do any more acting in this movie besides the first act? 
you know, part? I mean, is this him? Yeah. Okay. He's it. Do you know how the, it's not a real robot? Yeah, yeah. Well, I know that, but I mean, was that is that him? Is that's his voice with a, like a? That's his voice. Okay. I am not certain if. I mean, I assume there was some kind of post work on it. Like they bring him in for yeah. ADR, they do a little, a little bit of warping to it. Uh, of course, we had the "I'd buy that for a dollar" guy, which is a line that is still said all over the place. The that gun right there, the end of it looks incredibly small. Like he couldn't be shooting more than a BB. Panic button right there. I need to get a trench coat like that, you know, look look kind of like I'm dangerous. That's not a good uh, good thing to do. <laughs> Don't do that. It's okay, yeah. I'm white. The cops won't shoot me right away. <laughs> you can't wear a trench coat any, anywhere in this world anymore without being suspected of something. Oh, really? Look how yeah. tiny, tiny the end of that gun is. Gosh. I know. I've, if you ever watch The Last Stand with Arnold Schwarzenegger, there's a machine gun he's got that has like just the smallest tip on it <laughs> it's so obviously not the gun that they said it was yeah. look at that clothesline clothesline sends <laughs> him through the cops will not be paying for this mess good night <laughs> dun 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 I like how it's just like this is his routine is just go out and kick it but what made him arrive quicker than anybody else? Like, how does he find a rape in progress? Is this, like, is, does he have a precog? Is it Minority Report? Minor complaint, folks. <laughs> Man, there was, like, a ton of rape in 80s movies. Yeah. Like, if you were in theaters and you saw this, you're like, well, I know where this is going. And it's like, yeah. well, thankfully, it didn't quite get there. It didn't quite go Death Wish on us. Now, does he shoot them in their dicks? Well, one of them, yeah. Okay. Or you could wait to see it happen and then talk about it. Look at that <laughs> ominous shadow. Now, you never see him get out of the car full body because when he's sitting in the car, he's missing, you know, half his armor. He doesn't have the legs on. And I imagine he's probably got a good chunk of the back and lower torso missing, too, just so he can sit. That's going to leave a mark, buddy. Thug number two is uh, having second thoughts about this uh, gang rape. You ruined my dress. I like how he has this disconnect with humanity. Like he, he is part human still, and it's hard to define like what is an android, what is a cyborg. Now the Terminator, they call him a cyborg, but isn't he really a machine with, yeah, painted to look like a human in a sense? Whereas this was a human turned into a machine, and then people will call both a cyborg. I mean, heck, they, they have androids in Blade Runner, but what makes them any different than the Terminator? Cross the police tape like it's nothing. <laughs> and here's the weird part is everybody seems to be really aware of RoboCop. Like, this guy shows up. Yeah, there's media here, but they're not like, who are you? So a formal councilman wants his old job back. See, in Detroit, it's all about getting your job and keeping it. This movie foresaw all the economic woes of Detroit in the future. Heck yeah. Robocop, good luck using those stairs. Now, he's talking about some demands, and among them, he's, he wants a nice car. He wants an SUX 9000. 9000 SUX. It's, so, do you, would you name your luxury car the Sucks? <laughs> no. We see an ad for the car later as kind of bumper material between 
kind of it's it almost reminds me of like the use of the iris in iris out in star wars like it just a scene change bumper not really anything that caught on like throughout the late 80s you didn't start seeing a ton of movies with fake commercials between them Did you ever play the NES video game titled RoboCop? <laughs> um, I don't think so. I did, and it was pretty balls tough uh, when I was a kid. And then later on in high school, I tried it again and got to the very end and just, you know, ran out of lives, as you did back in the day. But there was a part yeah. here that was really tough where you had to punch through the wall quickly and try to take this guy out before he kills a hostage. And he would do dick moves. He would, like... He, oh, he did not fall very far. <laughs> but he he would have, like, the hostage, and he would duck, and you'd end up shooting the hostage dead, and that'd be the end of the mission, or, or he'd kill you. It's kind of a trade-off. Lee Iacocca Elementary School. I don't know if that actually exists or not, but that's a big figure in Detroit. Uh, I was... Uh, CEO of Chrysler in the day. Like, kept them out of total bankruptcy. I wonder how we would really react if we did have something like this. Like, I don't know if we would be so positive initially like this. I mean, there's so many movies that show AI going bad that it's got America, you know, looking at AI like it's a scary thing. Here's Battleship for the new millennium. Oh, yeah. That's actually very similar to how you would see those board games advertised back in the day. <laughs> Nuke em. Did a pretty authentic job there. Um, how would I react to Robo Policeman? I don't. Yes. I don't think I'd be too worried about it because I'm very white looking. Yeah, for sure. Um, I could see how other people would have issues. Robert Morton. Yep. Very proud of my baby. <laughs> the end of crime in 40 days. Yep, I get to go to the VIP bathroom now, baby. I like how people bring that, <laughs> like, pop culture into the movie. Like, they have the famous catchphrase from a TV show within this movie... And other characters say it, like how when I was a college freshman, everybody had to say, I'm Rick James, bitch. <laughs> Very odd here to know that enemies use the bathroom. You don't see that in a lot of movies. No. Man, these guys really fear Dick Jones, don't they? <laughs> you ever been in a bathroom that's got the shoe buffer? No, no. I didn't know that existed. I've seen a few around, but I okay. don't know what the black buffer and the red buffer are for. Like, it's one before and after. I, I'm not sure. What I don't really understand here is he's talking about how when I was your age, I used to kid the, the execs, and now you're doing it to me, and I, I don't like it. Like, he should be able to relate to it. Yeah. Buddy boy. That's something people do not say anymore. <laughs> Buddy boy. See, that's the world, man. It doesn't matter if it works. It matters if we can make money. Exactly. Kind of like how that RoboCop reboot went. Exactly. Oh Who cares God. if it's good? 
And I'm pretty sure it made some money and did okay for itself, too. It probably broke even. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard not to break even on something with, you know, brand raping recognition going in its favor, right? People have heard of RoboCop. That's the reason why you're there. Or if you have, if you're a kid and you're ignorant to old movies. You're a kid and you don't watch Vaughn's yeah. YouTube channels. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why you're uneducated. Oh, wow. It actually made $242 million on a $100 million budget. That's pretty awful. Yeah. Because well, the when in the general rule, and though I know this can't be true, but the general rule is the marketing budget doubles the production budget. So every, oh, sure. every dollar used in production is also used in marketing. But if a movie costs, you know, $100 million – how can you spend a hundred million dollars marketing it? If a movie costs two hundred million, where do you spend two hundred million dollars in marketing? Gosh. Robocop's dream of electric sheep. Or Clarence Boddicker. I just made a reference to a, a Philip K. Dick novel. Which novel? Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Picking up a lot of interference on your end right now. Or are you just what? Like, I don't know. Do you still hear it? Uh, no, but maybe you're a few seconds ahead of me on that machine. Maybe you didn't push start when I told you to. Um, I think I'm a, about half a second behind. You know, I think that sound you were hearing was my phone because it was next to my microphone. Oh, yeah. Don't put yeah. things by your mic. That might be yeah. a pro tip. I'm what you would call um, an idiot or just new to this whole using a microphone thing. Yeah, okay. I think it adds a certain flavor to the two of these commentaries when you screw up and I have to call you on it. Yeah. And then we don't talk about the movie for five minutes. So yeah, here's just... RoboCop. He's <laughs> leaving the chair. Never see him eat that baby food. I mean, they made mention of it, but that baby food stuff really stuck with me as a kid. I was like, why? He's <laughs> eating baby food? Yuck. But he never actually eats it. <laughs> There's Lewis. See how gone she was? And it's not like she's along his side for every mission. He doesn't roll out with a partner. I think in the second movie, she is his partner again. In the third, it's definitely that case. She doesn't know that's Murphy yet. Uh-oh. You just crossed the streams, lady. That's a reference to Ghostbusters, a movie that will be raped later. In uh, Remake Hell, I guess. Yeah. I feel like that remake is still a better version of what they were originally intending on doing by having the original cast come back. Well, are the is the cast going to show up and pass the torch? I mean, it's possible. I haven't read anything about that. I would sure hope so. I, but I, I do hope so. Yeah. I mean, I hope so for the sake of that movie, but still I would rather them not mess with it. But if they're going to do it, you know, try to do it with some kind of sense that we're not rewriting history on the original. Yeah. When you pretend that the original never happened, that's when you piss off Von Fry. That seems to be a running thing going on with uh, Hollywood these days. Yeah, we can just pretend that didn't happen. Now, the real amazing thing is going to be what happens with Conan. Because Conan the Barbarian got remade. And then Arnold's going around saying that he's coming back and it's going to be called, like, King Conan. And they're going to pretend the remake never happened. That would be quite the game changer. Yeah. Like, imagine if this next Ghostbusters sucked so hard that they wheel out, like, a 70-year-old version of the original <laughs> Ghostbusters. 
with whoever's still alive. Probably not Bill Murray because he looks like he lived a hard life. Yeah. So it's pretty much like uh, Winston and Ray, and that's it. <laughs> And then Janine gets upgraded. Janine, she's now no longer secretary. She's brought in. She's given like Egon's old stuff. <laughs> That's the <laughs> Ghostbusters actually... I want to see. That would be kind of cool. I just made that up, and it's already yeah. a better idea than what Hollywood can do. But they don't pay you to write movies. So. That's correct. Yeah. Shell. I don't think Shell. I mean, it's it's amazing <laughs> that Shell is in this movie, but that does, that doesn't look like the Shell logo we're used to or nothing. No. I've never been to a gas station that operates like this with the incredibly high crime rate look. Oh, uh, we have a lot of those where I live. You have a lot of this? A lot of yeah, these a like, lot of, kiosk? like the it's like a bulletproof glass. It's actually way thicker than that. It's about uh, about an inch and a half thick. We have some of those in the area. And I don't live in a shitty neighborhood, it's just uh down south, man, you never know what can happen. Dude, where I live, if you dropped your wallet while you were out jogging, you could come home and someone would have already put your wallet, like, on your doorstep. See, that's just, like, a, a fable where I come from. That does not happen. Kansas. Yeah, yeah. I, somebody had posted some kind of, they made some meme out of parking tickets on, t on Twitter. I'm like, I don't understand any of this. We don't have parking tickets. Like somebody, I guess there was something about parking and you have to display the ticket on your dashboard and somebody somebody wrote on their, their window like, good luck officer and had all these different tickets and somebody said, oh, they're going to get arrested because you can't do that. Or no, they did display the right one. They just didn't say which one was it. I'm like, I have <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> no idea. See how he's already out of the car? Oh, yeah. Oh. I thought that RoboCop has an odd stance for a guy who should be heavy enough that he's not thrown back by gunfire. But he has this thing where he, particularly in the NES video game, he really throws his non-shooting hand out backwards as like some kind of balance. You have triggered the psychological breakdown, thug. Make your getaway. Is that the pink gasoline of the future right there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> College boy, you better run. You are some kind of mathematician. This amazing explosion rate. Look at that. There's a guy there. There's a guy walking around. There's a guy walking around through all of that. Wow. Would never happen today. Dude, this guy is fairly operational considering what just happened to him with that wreck. I mean, you see him again and he's not really banged up. Okay, I'll talk. If I could get to a hospital. He would seem to be dead, but he's not. Right? Yeah. Got our mainframes here, baby. High tech, computers everywhere. All right, now we know R2D2 basically invented USB, but Robocop has it too. Give him the finger. Ching. <laughs> Have you ever seen Ghost in the Shell? Uh, is that the anime? Yeah, I'm talking about the original film from 95. I guess there's a manga from 93, but... It, I guess it was a source of inspiration for The Matrix, and the funny thing about it is whenever these computers... These cyborgs in that movie have to interface with computers. Their fingers split into two fingers apiece so they can type faster, which is so more complicated than plugging into a USB port. But I guess got to make it look cool, right? <laughs> okay, I am going after all of the accomplices. Shouldn't it be like known associates? I mean, Clarence was the ringleader of that outfit. He wasn't really an accomplice. 
I've got a feeling if he's going to go through his rap sheet, he's going to be sitting here for a while. He's lucky that Murphy's <laughs> yeah. on the recent murder list. <laughs> That's you. And of course, it's hard to not look at him and see the dad from that 70s show. Oh, yeah, he looks just like him. That is, that is the dad from that 70s show. The guy who plays oh, God. Clarence. That's, that's, uh... Oh, okay. Did I just blow your mind? You did. This is a great scene. Okay, so RoboCop arrives at his old house, which, with the characters living beyond the scope of just what we're seeing, they have moved on with their lives. They, you know, they don't have the the father in the family providing the dough to keep the house afloat. So, look how purple RoboCop is right here. I wonder I, if I could see this die. being a way to sell homes is setting up a video. Oh yeah. You know, not a specific machine as shown here, but hey, turn on the TV and pop in this disc and have it repeat. He's got his memories. There's a struggle between being Murphy and being RoboCop within him. And it's nice that it's not played out physically in some kind of weird, I have to fight my left hand with my right hand way. I don't see too much really dating this movie. I mean, okay, that's that display right there on that computer. Okay, big deal. But we don't see people constantly talking on outmoded giant cell phones. Uh, or constantly using outdated computers. So when you fill a movie with the tech of that time, it's going to be outdated quick. And so much of this is supposed to be futuristic, and but in ways that doesn't rely too much on the tech of the past. Yeah, that that camera is a good deal bigger than you know a camera would be. Yeah, at snapping a Polaroid for sure, which I don't think you can do anymore. It's nice that this scene plays out without too much of talking about it. Like, he's not asking somebody a whole lot of questions. <laughs> His There's mouth the gets score. so small. <laughs> That's the RoboCop theme right there, but, you know, different composition. Bam. I don't make offers. Uh, now this is uh, quite the quite the club here. Check out some of the attire or lack thereof. This is almost what music is it, again, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, just noises. Just noises. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even sure what instruments create these sounds. Beep, ding, ding, I think. It has to be just be computers because I can't. We saw the arrest pin, mode activated. Yeah. It's kind of like he has Terminator vision, yeah. but you know, a little, a little cheaper. Like it's not constantly graphing stuff, which would have been really hard to do, you know, with the computers at the time. But interesting thing here in RoboCop's trailer, it plays the music from Terminator. I think they're both oh, Orion wow. pictures, and so. At that time, they would recycle a lot of the music they had under, you know, they had yeah. the license to. They'd go ahead and use that for their next franchise's trailer. And there's music in trailers that throughout periods of time you constantly heard, like the theme to um, Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. That song has been in more trailers than anything. It is just ever present throughout the the mid to late 90s uh, early into the 2000s you heard it everywhere do you think that uh like score of the movies were more important back in like let's say the 80s compared to now or yes but i'm not totally sure why yeah 
Um, okay, so they're not trying to sell a soundtrack with this movie. It's not loaded up with a bunch of pop songs. Yeah. Or rock songs or anything. And maybe a soundtrack's available. But it's not like that was a something they were banking on to make cash. Yeah. But everything had an iconic score back in the 80s, or it didn't stay iconic, did it? No. That's the polite way uh, Boddicker addresses women to exit instead of murdering them right there. <laughs> yeah. So they should count themselves lucky. Dude, you're, you're VIP and you have like a little house on, you know, just a random neighborhood with no gated community or nothing. No mall cop. <laughs> Stop. Now, we did this in Total Recall, too, the addressing through the TV. Got a message for you. Put in the disc. Isn't that cool, though? He put in a CD yeah. and played video. Yeah. That's thinking ahead, folks. Yeah, exactly. Huh. He didn't just whip out a VHS tape or a laser disc. Now, I don't think you can get a grenade that looks like that, but that is one mean-looking grenade. And I like that it doesn't look like a regular grenade because my dad's constantly complaining in movies about how grenades and films have, like, leveling building effects when in reality they don't. We don't know what kind of grenade this is. It could be a house killer. Yeah. That is an incredibly 80s house, too. I think it would have been nicer if he had, like, something in in a way of an apartment though because it just doesn't seem like the right location for him now is this where they make their drugs so they had like robbed a bank they're using the money they steal to push out product make more money sps 12 auto shoddy staple of 80s action cinema wasn't that in Jurassic Park as it well? It was in Jurassic yeah. Park, yeah. They don't make it anymore, and I don't know if they're even really legal in the U.S. <laughs> I, I know they've moved on to another model, but it's a it's like the coolest looking shotgun, and that's why yeah. you see it. I think part of the stock is used in making the um, pulse rifles and aliens. Terminator had one. Um, that one with Rutger Hauer, where he, he's he's the hitchhiker, uh, hitcher. He's got one. I like describe the movie with the word that describes the movie, and then I think <laughs> yeah. the title. It's called. Wasn't it called Hitcher? The, yeah, that that movie <laughs> where there's a Jurassic period dinosaur park, <laughs> and what was oh Jurassic Park. <laughs> The robotic cop officer movie. Yeah, what was Man, it called? Man, look at this guy right here. Like, who's, who told him to do this? Like, sniff the wine. Like, I mean, With director choice, actor choice, awesome choice. You chose <laughs> wisely. Yeah. Is that a members only jacket on Clarence? It should I, be. I actually have a members only jacket, but I don't wear it. You should. I know I should. It's a little too small for me, but I don't want to get rid of it. He's got kind of a scarf. Like, is that a scarf tie? Looks like an ascot. Like what, Without uh, a collar shirt. <laughs> what Freddy wears. Uh, inside, it's like inside <laughs> the collar. It's very odd. Busting the door down. You could have a supercut of doors being busted down in the 80s. Okay, look at the way how they're lighting up. Like, that is a little Terminator right there. Oh, yeah. It's like identifying the targets.
Uh, trouble does not sound like a legal term. We'll have to see what your definition of trouble is going to be, RoboCop. I notice he never gets shot in the face. No, that's like, where I would want to shoot him. Yeah. That's probably where it would do him the most damage. As that's still, it's got to be quite human. I mean, I don't think he has, like, you know, metal plates directly behind the gums. No. Look at these weird poses he's striking as he shoots. And his mouth really gets into it. I guess Peter Weller, the thing he can do is move his mouth. It's, he, yeah. he can't give a look with his eye. So he's he's working the mouth. Well, it kind of reminds me of the uh, Judge Dredd remake. Carl Urban puts a lot of uh, emotion with his mouth and what little you can see of his face. Mouth acting, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's much much appreciated. I think a lot of people feel like that Judge, Judge Dredd feels like a RoboCop successor. Yeah. I wasn't really wild about Dredd. Um, yeah, I loved it, man. I thought it, it, me I thought it was okay. I mean, it's better than the Stallone one, but I thought there were oh, things yeah. that the Stallone one did better, too. I mean, I, overall, yeah. it's not it's not a good movie, really, but... Yeah. There were things I thought it did better. I thought the costume looked better in the Stallone version, actually. It looked more like the costume from the comics. Yeah, okay. Now, you can jump through drywall pretty easily. That's nothing inauthentic about that. Uh-oh, he lost his glasses. One thing That's I not can... being silent. <laughs> One thing I did like about the Dread remake, if we can go back on that real quick, is that it kind of had the uh, the raid redemption, like, which I have you know, not seen. But hey, if is, you have a yeah. if you have an ultraviolet code, whatever, and you said you were going to send me a John Wick code, waiting on that. I haven't. Um, it's not out on DVD yet. I thought it was. Did I say for you to wait for it to be on DVD? <laughs> what else can I do? Pirate? I mean, I don't know. Go down to the Coke Lab where they make John Wick and shoot the place up until they give you a copy like he just those... keeps going through the glass like <laughs> yeah i mean how much glass can you take i don't know i'm one of those lamos that doesn't really pirate movies i should probably uh yeah i don't either because it just seems like too much crap could get pinned on me for being that guy but with my luck i'll go to prison so i would go to prison and it would it would be terrible yeah yeah well, last time I pirated anything, I uh, I pirated. You're gonna make fun of me, but True Blood season one and two, and I got a uh, email or no a mail from uh, HBO, uh, cease and desist letter saying delete it from my hard drive or uh, they will follow up with further action. So I got kind of scared. That's astonishing because the law the laws of this stuff though I shouldn't know this that but it's because I know everything about movies. Yeah, yeah. It's illegal to pirate. A movie. It's illegal to bootleg it. It's not illegal to buy it. Yeah, I don't know. You can you can buy bootlegged movies, and there's nothing against you for doing that. Yeah, I didn't pay for it. I downloaded it through Pirate Bay. And... Yeah, so <laughs> I I should think that downloading it is not an issue, but being the host of it is the yeah. issue. I honestly think it was a scare tactic. Um, I don't think they would have done anything, but I don't want to take chances. He just booked uh, Clarence. He wants his phone call. I want, I want my phone call. Yeah, I like the way he talks. Like earlier, <laughs> we, we were talking over. He's like, "Can you fly, Bobby?" Man, the lawyers. Jeez, they do some work. You really screwed up. Click. What is this giant black thing there? Gosh. Now, earlier we did have a shot of his tracker, and you can see that's in effect because they're not really going to program a small LCD screen to do that biz. It looks like an iPod. At this time, I don't think you could have a color display doing that kind of work. Because, like, a Game Gear wasn't around. I don't think TVs were that small. RoboCop just gets straight to it. I'm I'm here to arrest a guy. And really, what does he have against Dick Jones? Just a, kind of a confession from Clarence, right? I mean, he could have named yeah. anybody. I work for the old man, the, the top guy at OCP. 
Interesting thing here, though, like they showed the three like directives, how he can't, the things he's not allowed to do, and and like he's to serve the public trust and whatever. But but then introduced here is Directive Four, like a secret measure within RoboCop that he doesn't know about until he does it. Kind of like having a virus on your computer. I mean, yeah, sure, you got some kind of confession here, but wouldn't he be brought in for questioning and not arrested? Yeah, I think it's just the way he's programmed. He did... I only arrest. It's just arrest mode. It's not questioning yeah. mode. I like how he has the Ron Swanson office doors. Oh, does he? Yeah, he hit a button and they opened and closed. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, malfunctioning face. Ha ha ha, Directive 4, bitches. Yeah. Must arrest the struggle. This, a picture of this right here with like an animated GIF, that's the struggle right there. <laughs> yes, yes. Only the senior officers, buddy. Can't let the little underlings have this privilege. They play this movie so straight. It's not like they're just cracking jokes everywhere. But, but then you, with all that seriousness, I think that there is a certain like aspect to the '80s films where it was like we have to have our bit of humor. So, what can we do? Like it's like mandated from top down. There must be comic relief in films. What are you going to do for it? And it's like, okay, here's what we got. There's going to be goofy commercials. And you're like, okay, fine. I guess I guess that'll work. I had to kill Bob Morton because he made a mistake. That is easy to forget, but that's a key line in the movie. Because uh, RoboCop's going to use that against him. Lion Roar from ED, Ed 209. It was the MGM Roar. <laughs> it quite possibly could have yeah. been, yeah. I, I think MGM only has the rights to the movie, though. Like, the, it... Orion was a studio that was putting out movies. It's just they were not one of the bigs. We have a Claymation RoboCop fighting Claymation Ed 209. And really, I can't complain too much about it. I mean, I know it's not super thrilling action. I'm sure that, you know, they had to go bigger and, you know, yeah. level a whole office in the newer film, I'm sure. It wouldn't be enough for him to just shoot one rocket. It would have to be like a stream of rockets in slow motion with diving acrobatics, right? <laughs> yes, yes. I, I'm just, I mean, I'm just taking a guess, and I'm probably right. Oh, so that was a globe he had? Who has a globe with black water? Rich people, I guess. <laughs> really, I don't see the reason for globes anymore, like your your LCD display can handle... I want yeah. to see a picture of the Earth with real-time weather. I mean, Globe can't do that. Imagine if the Globes had weather, though. That's that's your next tech innovation right oh, there. Oh, that'd be cool. Smart Globe. I'm going to patent that before Microsoft does. Ooh, stairs. Stairs. Ed 209 had one weakness. Stairs. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Jesus Christ, it sounds like a uh, Velociraptor sort of animal. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Being tased, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sounds like my cat when I'm giving her a bath. You're not supposed to do that, are you? I, well, um, to put her flea, she has like a flea shampoo I have to give her like once every few months. It is terrifying. Wow, I don't need to hear this. Yeah, it's an Okay, awful... so uh, Dick Jones called the police see this battle damage kind of helmet look here you can get a robocop from hot toys with that that look and boy is it legit have you seen those hot toys figurines um when i was younger i mean i don't know if, i know what they still have younger them. they i don't they haven't been out forever they're hot toys yeah they're like a boutique uh hong kong based uh, toy manufacturer that makes oh. incredibly high-end like action no, figures yeah i know never mind i i, I have a uh a Joker one from the Killing Joke. 
They made a uh I don't replica. think so. Hot Toys did. I think so. I don't know. I've seen that they have a Heath Ledger Joker. They have the Nicholson. They've got the Keaton Batman. That Like, the skin, the skin sculpting on this stuff, is it looks like a miniature person. The RoboCop one looks really legit. And actually, of their figurines, it's the first one to have die-cast metal. So their RoboCop figurine has real metal. Real RoboCop has plastic. Yeah, I Something don't know. to think about. I don't have the Hot Toys version. I have, maybe I'll put down my Amazon <laughs> wish list, and uh, somebody will be stupid enough to buy me something from Amazon wish list for a change. That would be crazy because I'm not a hot chick. Yeah. So we're going to have to market Nimble more. Nimble getting away the... <laughs> here. Like, this is, this is how you descend a parking garage. Lewis have... happened to be in the right place. Thank you, Lewis. I mean, yeah, it's understandable she was in route. I mean, why was she behind everybody else? But surely, surely break her shoulder. But so you see, like she really didn't have a lot to do through through the course of the movie, but she is an important character. Yeah, just open fire on the police car right away. So, you know, after we're brought down, we have the fall of robot Jesus cop here. He's being shunned from society and all that bit. Interject with a weird car commercial. Eight point two miles per gallon. At the time that was probably funny. <laughs> but there are cars that get something like that. Yeah. Look at this. Strategic <laughs> peace missile laser system, whatever, and it's like, oh no, it misfired and happened to kill presidents. <laughs> hmm, conspiracy theory. This actually does look like a legit news broadcast, so like, see, yeah. see these kind of transitions. Uh, Lisa there, she's currently on Celebrity Apprentice trying not to lose her mind that's the real world news people right there just interview random people on the street yeah. and um, I have I have some friends in local news I'm not gonna say anything to get them immediately fired but it, people ask them, like, why do you guys always seem to talk to the dumbest people? And it's like, those are the people who don't have jobs and are available on the scene. Yeah. The, pe the people who you want to hear from are busy. Look at Clarence. He got the suit on. Uh, his glasses seem to be in working order. Uh, her clothes, not entirely in fashion. I think she's wearing enough purple. She's wearing one of those ascot tie things. Must be the big look in Detroit. Yeah. This shirt that he's wearing under his jacket seems like something Keanu Reeves would wear. Or like me. I mean, I would <laughs> if, I, if I had one. That looks pretty badass. Like, Gray suit, black shirt. Mm. So here's where he suades Clarence. He's like, you know, that new city we're building, it's going to need its prostitutes and its coke. And one man <laughs> could own everything. He's like, now you're talking with my pleated <laughs> pants. You're speaking my language. Nobody wears pleats anymore. It's kind of a shame. Because, you know, Clarence made it look so so good right there. Yeah, his pants look kind of wrinkly. Uh, 
And those pants wrinkle quick. <laughs> and that looks like a working model right there, but what's it showing? Just two different screens? I mean, turn it on and off. Yeah. I don't, in similar way to the tracker in Total Recall, it's like, how could you really find anybody with that? Like, it knows a map of, of everything. And here's another weird bit, is this Taurus they use as their police car really doesn't look that old. Because you could see 90s movies with cars that look very boxy, very 80s, and that Taurus has that... T more towards the rounder edge that you see in like some late 80s cars and a lot of cars throughout the 90s that kind of rounded off corners so it doesn't look completely archaic it's uh, you know go watch the Terminator and look at the cars cops are driving in that there's your gun yeah I guess it's not that heavy. How he can <laughs> unscrew this without looking? Because he's RoboCop. I'm not hungry. You should be, but okay. <laughs> okay, when he lifts his visor off, his helmet his chin disappears. He's clearly got this black chin strap, right? Yeah. It just it's just gone. It's just uh, a bit of a a nitpicky jump cut kind of thing here, but as soon as he lifts the top part of the helmet off, everything's off. See, everybody's looking at the back of his head and like, wow, that's so cool. How, that's amazing, but they don't realize, oh, well, where did the chin thing go? That's incredibly good makeup work right there to Hell yeah. build upon his face and his head so that you can make it look like, you know, a good chunk of his head's missing, for that matter. It's, like, not easy to pull off. There is a new sci-fi film out. I just saw about it yesterday. It's called Ex Machina, and it has characters that I guess are robots, or at least one of them is, and she has a look like this where she has the RoboCop skin face with the metal back of the head. That uh, that movie looks very, very good. I think. It's from the writer of The Beach, and this, is, I think, is his first movie directed. Okay. See, in Hollywood, they don't let you direct something until you're really old and you've been around for a while, so... Yeah, you wrote The Beach, 15 years later, we'll let you direct a movie. Have you noticed how old directors are anymore? There's like one director out in the biz right now, and he's doing the fa Fantastic Four. That's like the only director of a big budget movie that's younger than me. Everybody else is like well into their 40s and 50s, 70s, is whatever. That, is that, that's the uh, Chronicle, Joss Trank? Yeah, I don't yeah. want to remember his name. I don't like him because he's younger yeah. than me. That's yeah. like the sole reason right there. I thought Chronicle was all right. I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't believe I think it was as good as other people are giving it credit. It had major issues. Like, the guy's chronicling what? Like, just one day he decides to film everything? Like, why not wait until, oh, we saw this, now I'm going to start filming yeah. it? Because, you know, from the storytelling perspective, it doesn't make sense that that's yeah. the drive. Like, nobody, nobody does that. <laughs> nobody would do that. I mean, yeah. if I started filming my life, would later that day would I find like a million dollars like because to make it interesting like it doesn't really work like yeah, that yeah right you got, it's got some weird dumb luck to it yeah, that's I'm not I sure like... what this car is built upon it is, this is a 6000 SUX is a unique looking car kind of looks like a Jaguar in places <laughs> maybe a LeBaron I, I really don't know So all these guys got these uh, new state-of-the-art bang-bang Cobra Strike cannon I how, rifle. I, call it. I love how black people are always portrayed in 80s movies as like Black Panther members. They just all have those hats yeah, and they the do. Yeah, big they, aviators. The shades at night yeah. and the beret. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this gun, if you ever played Far Cry Blood Dragon, you have this 
particular gun. That's your sniper rifle. Michael Bean is the voice of the protagonist. Your handgun is the Auto 9 pistol. And you have a shotgun, which is from, it's called the Galleria 1991, uh, making reference to the Galleria scene in Terminator 2. So... Oh, look at the those like lines across the top of that scope. It's got the PlayStation thing going too. It's yeah. PS2 scope. As powerful as this is, and as seemingly accurate they as they are without using the sight. <laughs> no scoping. In you know one minute, they're going to become terrible shots. <laughs> it reminds me of explosive rounds in the Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Man, these are some potent explosives. They're committing acts of terror. He's at the steel mill. Let's go. It's uh, night right now, but it sure takes a long time to get to that steel mill. Because it'll be day by the time we get there, guys. It's clear on the other side of town. I love how happy they are, even though they just got their car destroyed. Makeshift pillow. <laughs> I brought a couple blankets, and then I remembered you don't sleep, so... Uh, or you don't need a blanket, anyways. I'm going to use your blanket as a pillow. <laughs> He's like, uh, she might be sleeping. I'm not sure if this is going to wake her up. But uh, <laughs> it's time for target practice. I have not seen a more giant, taken seriously handgun in a film. Like, Joker, he's got a wickedly long barrel, right? But it's yeah. kind of a joke thing. Yeah. What a terrifying way to wake somebody up. She was not as startled as she should have been. Yeah, she's like, oh, you're just shooting guns. Okay. I, I guess there's so much gunfire in Detroit that it's really nothing big. It's kind of like if just the train went by your house or an airplane. Now, during this bit here, he does not have his uh, helmet on he goes at him uh, commando as far as face goes he's probably contractually obligated to get a little face time in the movie all right now he knows you're here that gun looks like it'll be a little too heavy to just casually <laughs> just pick up like that. Yeah, the gun should be significantly weighted. Yeah. They're like, we don't need much of a plan. And RoboCop kind of ruins a lot of it. Like, he's, he's like, I'm over here. Element of surprise. I don't need it. About looks like an ice cream truck. See, what was the point of having them shoot that way if you're going to tell them where you are? Yeah. Looking for Mary? Maybe he wants to see. Then he what shoots their, them. He probably, the way I'm looking at it, like, he wants to see what their firepower can do. Wants them to waste a few rounds, not that they ever yeah. reload. I like how uh, our guy down there, he's like bleeding out right now, and now he's dead. <laughs> it's weird how in newer films it's hard to remember who died. It's like, well, I didn't remember if that guy died or not, because it's, it's yeah. cut so quick and erratic and characters dress alike or whatever. Like It's so hard to figure out who died. Like In order for the audience to care if someone died or if they're told know that this guy died it's like they have to have like some kind of slow motion death monologue thing for us to register but here 
You can keep track of it. Toxic waste. Look how quick he uh, got out of the way there. A lot faster than his usual walk. Yeah. Robocop it does not run. Now, I know there are Robocop. There was a Robocop Xbox game. I saw it at Walmart, didn't play it. Terrible reviews. Can't imagine how slow you must have walked throughout that game. This guy, he got uh, some skin issues. I like what they did with his mouth. He's got his, like, lip pulled down. Oh, yeah. His fingers, the tips of his fingers are melting over. God, I love how disgusting uh, practical effects looked back in the old 80s. I miss that. They don't do that anymore. Like, no. when when a computer guy dies, it's funny. It looks yeah. bad. It doesn't look authentic at all. I mean, for all I know, they could have just hit a bunch of fruit over here. Like, he, he crashes into him, and he splatters. I guess in the, this being the R-rated version, I guess the original cut before it was trimmed down I guess it's somehow more graphic I'm not really sure <laughs> why, how because it, it seems like he gets flattened pretty good here kind of reminds me of the Toxic Avenger right there yeah Ugh. it looks kind of oh. like he was watermelons and punch like <laughs> but that's nicely set up we showed oh, yeah. him turning into the toxic avenger another guy's disgusted by him he gets flattened and that results in clarence going off into this ditch T look at these shots here i mean you got to feel for lewis she doesn't have that giant uh body armor on and uh, that's that's no small gun he's shooting her with either She should be out, like, unconscious yeah, at least. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I don't think you take two 357 shots and just kind of, like, crawl around. Not in the chest. Gosh. You get to that Cobra Strike rifle. Well, hey, wait a minute. I, I don't give up anymore. This is well executed right here and looks incredibly dangerous. It's a good thing that crane was loaded up with debris. Yes. And he knows how to use the machine. Yeah, which is not <laughs> easy to figure out. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Oh gosh. That looks they couldn't have they couldn't have crushed him any more real today. <laughs> yeah. I got him, boom. They know how to blow things up in the 80s. Hell yeah. Face, still fine. Yeah, I wish it took a little damage, but... Boom. You have the chord striking there with the music, too. Yes, I don't know if RoboCop should be feeling pain, though. Look at that USB port to the jugular. I'm yeah. thinking the way that's shot, clearly that was edited out. Like, there must have been, like, a giant squirt of blood come from him, then end up on RoboCop in, like, the original edit, so. I'll be okay. They'll fix you. They always do. <laughs> Please help me. Oh, they fix everything. Gosh, I saw this movie a few days ago, and I'm getting quotes wrong. It's okay. He's like, uh, I guess I'll push this off myself. Some help you were. Back to the Ed 209 plan, guys. Not that it had problems with stairs or shot yeah. an executive. To prove to you how good Ed 209 is, I put one downstairs. It's got to be some speaker coming from that, huh? If you can hear him yeah. that far away. Yeah. All right, uh, we'll see about that, buddy. 
does Robocop need to set up the tripod? I mean, you saw how accurate Clarence's thumbs yeah. were. Not even <laughs> using the sight. Robocop, who can't miss a shot, has to set up the tripod. Nitpicking. I like this. Imagine the time that must have taken. That, yeah. I mean, that's like an easy month of work right there just for that shot. And look at the way how the the servo goes bad and it flutters that toe. <laughs> Attention to detail. Guess what movies don't have today? Attention to detail. Well, you're a good guesser. I am. Or someone taught you well. Yep, got to open them doors. Both doors. I can fit through one. But I'm going straight down the it's middle. It's more cinematic for two. And you had that like laser sound when <laughs> the door flew open. Directive four stopping me. I like how Peter Weller looks like Peter Weller nowadays with like no hair. <laughs> oh my god, he turned into Robocop, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was uh championing for I think maybe it was just a viral video gag, but there was some talk of having a Robocop statue in Detroit. And he was in the video to promote the idea. Yeah. I think they were serious about that. I think if they passed that up, they were stupid. So they don't pay me to make statues (laughs) or approve them. Going to whip out that uh, chrome-plated... Desert Eagle, the, the just, gun of the movie. <laughs> it's always just kept right there. Yeah, it's a, in its on, own on little box. For, because <laughs> they have a lot of demonstrations that use the Desert Eagle. Yeah. Who wants to use the Desert Eagle this week on the next Ed 209 case study? This is really well played, you know? You're fired. Thank you. Uh, now, his arms are a little elongated when he falls. The puppet here. That guy really likes death. Like, he was giggling before the other guy died. Look how long his, his arms, I know. His forearms he are just crazy <laughs> length. Oh, yeah. He looks it's like... a short shot, though. I mean, it's yeah. nothing to I'll complain too yeah. much. Oh, there we go. We are whipping the gun around. We're Listen to his voice right at the very end here. I'll, I'll try not to talk. That's Peter Weller without the the enhanced voice. So he is, at the end of this movie, he he's more human than robot in the brain, I'm guessing. like He's got the yeah. two sides battling out, and they're, they're more closer to equilibrium instead of just being a tool of the cops. Folks, that's RoboCop. Um, Robotic cop officer. You know, I, I think uh, I'd give this movie like 9 out of 10 on IMDb. Uh, what would you rate this? Uh, I would do 9 out of 10. Not sure trying to follow your suit, but well, if you it. don't, if you don't say at least nine out of ten, people are going to think you're stupid. So yeah, I know. I mean, that's one thing to consider. I'm people are probably writing hate letters to me if they listen this far. Why do you not give it ten out of ten? <laughs> I complained about a few things, didn't I? I mean, gosh. Yeah. Nancy Allen. I I was thinking, is her name Nancy Allen or Nancy Black? Or because like there there are some ways to get those mixed up. But yeah, this is uh. A very this movie has aged, I think, better than the Terminator. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, Terminator. It's weird to think that it gets so much of the credit. Like, it, maybe people just felt that the sequel to RoboCop fell off so far that it's that's why it was out of the zeitgeist, is like out of the conversation for so long. People are get kind of unaware of it in a way. Like, there's no, there's not like a steady stream of new. RoboCop material coming at us at all times. It's not uh, picked up like it's some kind of Star Wars thing, but um, yeah, I think this is. Uh, may I would say this is actually better than the first Terminator. It's uh, it learns some lessons from that movie though, so it definitely benefits from from the Terminator in some ways. But okay, so. Uh, in case you were wondering why we didn't do what we said we were going to do with Batman Forever, all the Batman are being yanked from Netflix by the time you listen to this. Uh, February 1st is when they're being yanked. So, wasn't a lot of point to doing a Netflix commentary track to a movie you couldn't watch on Netflix. That Now, sure, some of these movies we do the commentaries on, they're probably going to disappear, so watch them while you can. But I'm saying... 
you know, we'd like to hope that we're doing them over ones that are going to be around for a while. So I don't know yeah. what we're going to do next or when it's going to be, but, uh, you know, maybe in a week or whatever. So uh, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.